Hi everyone! In today's video, I will be talking a little bit about cribs and bassnets. As everyone knows, your baby probably needs a very safe place to sleep, and there's different approaches to go about this. Um, some parents, from when the baby's born, choose to have the baby in a bassinet, which is like a little basket for a baby, and others prefer to go about the family bed route, which is when the parents sleep along with the baby. Um, there has been some uh, controversies around this, and um, some physicians do recommend that parents don't do this, um, just because you never know how we sleep as adults can you know, harm the baby, maybe putting our arm over the baby and not even knowing it, and things like that. So please be aware of that. Now, a small, uh, a bassinet is pretty much a small portable bed for the baby and the baby can really sleep in that until they kind of grow out of it. Um, but make sure that the mattress in the basket is snug and fitted and that the sheets do not pull because if they do, they might come up and um, hurt the baby and that could be a hazard. So um, it's very much suggested that the uh, a wide base uh, of the bassinet is important so it doesn't tip over in any circumstance. Now the primary focus of this video is um, going to be more about cribs. Um, a crib is more of a permanent type of uh, piece of equipment um, and you can purchase if you can afford it. Um, some cribs are really neat that they're designed in a way for a child to grow with it where it can be convert converted into a toddler's bed. Um, but before you purchase one, um, make sure to check out some of the safety features of it um, to help ensure that the baby is safe when they're sleeping because a lot of the time they are going to be sleeping. And so I'll start going through some of the features that you should look out for before buying a crib. Um, number one, the bars of the crib should not be more than two inches wide apart. Um, a good test is if you can put a, a soft drink like a Coca-Cola can or Pepsi can, whatever it may be, through the bars, then it's too far apart. Um, so avoid those because it's very easy for a baby to get hurt or put their arm through and things like that. So look for things that are less than two inches apart, but two inches at max. Um, mattresses should be snug fitted, as I said with bassinets. Um, you shouldn't be able to fit more than two fingers between the side of the crib and the mattress. So between there, you shouldn't be able to put more than two fingers in there. Um, number three, the mattress should be firm and supportive. Um, getting too soft of a, of a mattress or a flimsy mattress is not really good for the baby and for us as well. So try to avoid that. Number four, the railing should be about 26 inches higher than the lower level of the mattress support and at least four inches above the mattress at its highest level. Um, and this is also another safety feature, it's just uh, measuring things and some companies do follow these by a standard approach, um, but there are some companies that are not Canadian based or North American based that may not uh, be up to these standards of safety measures that are part of um, the safety associations. Um, the next is number five, which is the finish on the crib should be non-toxic, um, especially if you're using a secondhand crib. Make sure the paint is um, lead free. Most are nowadays, but just make sure because some of the older ones may not be. Um, number seven, sorry about that, my nose is itchy. Number seven is be sure that the there's no cutouts on the headboards or footboards so that baby doesn't get caught in them. Um, I know sometimes um, for decor bases, like the headboard has like carvings and things like that. Just make sure it's not um, something too deep that baby can get caught in with that. Number eight is be sure that the teething rail, so around the crib, um, 
that all the hardware is sturdy and securely fastened in the crib uh, because the last thing you want to do is oh, as baby starts you know developing their grasping pincer and things like that that they don't get hurt number nine avoid using cleaning bags or um, garbage bags as a waterproof cover for mattresses I've heard of some parents doing this um, you could grab um, water uh, waterproof fitted sheets now for pretty cheap um, Walmart or Amazon even um, so I suggest you getting that rather than a garbage bag because if it um, pulls off the bed it could be a choking hazard for the baby really quickly so to avoid that please do not use any garbage bags or things like that to waterproof um, I know some parents use it because um, as they're potty training the baby that the baby might go on the bed and that's fine there are waterproof fitted sheets that you can purchase now um, for a very low cost and I suggest you going with that route number 10 um, I know that some parents or new parents that live in a smaller space look for smart furniture, furniture that could be kind of modeled as multiple use. And one of them being is cribs attached to a dresser. Uh, this was popular for some time. I think it's faded now, but regardless, I want to mention it to make sure you avoid that um, because when the baby starts uh, learning to climb and things like that, they could easily fall over the dresser um, if the baby starts crawling over the crib and things like that. Versus if you had a normal crib, it wouldn't be that high and the railings and how that's built is in a way that you avoid that risk anyways. So I highly suggest that you steer clear from that kind of a crib. Uh, now I'll go through some uh, precautions and tips that I've pulled together regarding cribs and sheets. Um, and these are some things that may be like, oh duh, I know that kind of thing. But sometimes you don't think about certain things that are like when you really think about it, you might get it. But sometimes you just don't think about it initially. So I want to make sure you're aware of those types of things. Um, so first is never use a top sheet or um, waterproof pads, the ones that I just mentioned earlier, on top of a fitted sheet. Um, put it over it uh, because it could easily pull off again, being a hazard. Um, another thing is that many believe the crib should be free of all kinds of um, things like toys, pillows, no bumper pads, um, comforters, or a lot of blankets to reduce the risk of SIDS, which is a sudden infant death syndrome. I know that sounds scary, but it has happened. Um, so really try to keep the baby's crib free of any unnecessary stuffed toys or fluffy items that are soft, um, including anything made of fleece and sheepskin spe specifically. Um, bumpers in a crib can become a trap for a baby and a baby can suffocate if the baby can't get out under them. So avoid that much as you can. Um, and the next thing is if your baby is chilly, put a zip a blanket a sleeper to keep them warm and safe instead of um, just piling them in blankets again that could be a hazard whereas a sip up blanket is it's just like a little pouch and they're safe and they're not um, it won't they can't do anything to harm themselves um, another tip I mentioned this earlier is to ensure that fitted sheets wrap two inches under the mattress I think I meant the space but under and all sides as well um, and if sheets shrink during your washing, just discard them or iron them out or something, but don't use them um, because it's, it's it could easily pull out. Um, if possible, you can find these as well where there's sheets with straps on them so you can strap it under the mattress. I suggest you using them uh, with your mattress with any sheets so that it's held down properly. Uh, the next really important thing, I think this is one of the most important things, is the placement of your crib. It's very important, don't put a crib against an outside wall. Um, outside wall being referred to, um, say in this, in this room currently, there's a window, 
that would be the considered the outside wall versus this one there's another room uh, next to me so this is an inside wall so prefer to use those type of rooms um, keep the crib away from radiators air ducts hot or cold um, keep the window away from any window uh, blind cords um, or drapery cords especially because that can easily be something as they grow something they play with and hurt themselves um, and try not to attach any I, I know there's a lot of uh, cameras now that parents use to baby watch um, sleeping monitors don't attach it right onto the crib uh, especially when they're super young um, or as they're growing sorry <laughs> because that's when they start fooling around with things and they can get tangled up on things if they're on wireless um, so one last tip um, this is something that I learned from the American Acad Acad Academy uh, of Pediatrics uh, who advise that parents put babies to sleep on their back um, when putting your baby down for a nap um, it's advised to put them on their back um, because a lot of stats show that babies who sleep on their back are at lower risk of SIDS which is a sudden infant death syndrome again I know it sounds scary but it's studies and it's factual things that have happened to children and babies so this is why I'm bringing it up to get the baby in the habit of sleeping on their back um, and some researchers even claim when babies and us even as older adults when we learn to sleep on our backs more um, it just has a lot more benefits and for babies it reduces the rate of risk with SIDS so that's all the tips I have around cribs um, bassinets and sleeping especially with sheets and things like that I hope you found that helpful and if you have any other tips that you'd like to share with the community please comment below like and subscribe thanks guys see you later